Hi everyone, I'm Jim and welcome with this harmonization, the second record by the band Carbonize. Today we might be celebrating the 30th anniversary of the record society to go back and see if it still holds up or not. You might be probably wondering how I found out about this band. Well, it's because of Therion or Therion, depending on how you pronounce it. My sister was a massive fan of Therion back when I was like 3 or 4 years old and she would play me their music all the time. Her favorite albums were Telly, Vovin and Dejial, I think. For me it was and still is Lepaka Cliffhoff. Anyway, years later when I finally got the internet in 2008, I decided to check out Christopher's side projects, you know the dude from Therion, and Carbonized is one of them. The lineup here is Christopher Johnson on the vocals, guitars and piano, Lars Rosenberg, the founding member on vocals and bass, and Piotr Wawrzeniuk on the drums and vocals. As you can see, all of the band members do vocals on this record, and also all of them were a part of Therion at some point, like Piotr Wawrzeniuk played on the 3rd, 4th and 5th record I think on the drums, and Lars played only on telly. A fun fact for you about this band, Carbonized for some reason always waited a long time to release their music, I don't know why. Like for example, the first album was recorded in January 91, it was released later on. This record was recorded in 3 days in August 1992 I think and then released in 93, and in 1993 they recorded their third record, Screaming Machines, I think, but they've released it in 1996. Why wait so long? Especially when you record something with a groundbreaking sound. I have no clue how that happened. The production here was handled by Thomas Coxberg, and it's tight, it's clean but heavy, no loudness or no clipping, just the way I like it. There's a lot of space on this record and I truly enjoy that. Message is diverse, the songs are mostly very abstract and hard to figure out lyrically. We've got some songs about death, society, sex, relationships, but also night, space, psychology, etc. Structure of the tracks is mostly technical, which means we've got from 10 to 20 different segments throughout the songs, and some of them do repeat but most do not. For example, in the song Lord of Damnation we've got one segment that repeats, this might be called a chorus or a verse, I don't care, but everything else does not repeat, it's just once in the song. And we also have tracks that are more advanced instead of technical, which means that more stuff repeats. In the case of the first song Frozen Landscapes and the last one with me darling, the Song is comprised of one segment, but on top of it, the guitarist and the bassist are doing various things, like they are changing their melodies constantly, but the main beat does not change in any way. When it comes to the music on this record, it could be described as avant garde metal, lots of prog elements here, jazz fusion, dissonant chords, weird noises piano and symphonic stuff, thrash metal influences, death metal, black metal, there's just everything on this record and it sounds so interesting to me because you don't hear such hybrids a lot. Some people call this band progressive death metal and that's also fine. What I'm trying to say here is that you cannot categorize it, it's a hybrid music. The album starts with frozen landscapes and the first thing I'm going to notice here is the drumming. I love it, the drummer Piotr is very talented, I love his groove, his style, the precision of his playing, the double bass work, the blast beats, the more calm parts, it's all here. Next we've got the bass by Lars, the founding member, the bass is audible. He doesn't follow the guitars that much, he mostly does his own thing, which is very nice. Then we've got the guitar work by Chris. I love his very dissonant sounding melodies, they're just so weird. They remind me of old school Korn, but also those very obscure death metal bands from the beginning of the 90s. It has that vibe. We also have some cool guitar solos here and there, some more 
lead melodic guitar work that is more positive sounding than some evil dissonant stuff. We also have some acoustic parts here and there and they are also very melodic and fun to listen to. Next we've got the keyboard and piano elements and I love that stuff, it actually reminds me of Taeyeon, you know, the third and fourth records. And the last but not least we've got the vocals by every band member, so Chris, Lars and Piotr. I must say that the screaming, yelling, shouting and growling on this record is perfect. It's so emotional, it's angry, it's full of energy. Those vocals are my favorite, but then we've got the clean singing and every single one of those guys does a different singing style. So I think Piotr is like something like that. I do enjoy his vocals. Same with Lars. Lars' vocals, the cleans are also fine, but Chris's aren't that great. I think he's the dude that is moaning on every song like <laughs> and well, it doesn't sound good to me, it actually annoys the fuck out of me like on the song Succubus, like the first part of the song is so awful because of the vocals, because the vocals are like <sighs> He, he sounds like he's moaning and dying inside like he's old and it annoys the hell out of me. I'm happy that his vocals got better with age, especially on Lepaka Cliffhoff by Taeyeon he sounded amazing but here he doesn't sound as good but that's to be expected because this was recorded in 1992. Still I have to give props to those guys because there are so many various distinct sounding voices on this record, like you have 6 or 9 different vocal styles and it makes the record sound fresh even after all those years. Going back to Frozen Landscapes, this song actually doesn't have any vocals. It's also very simple structure wise, like it has one beat, one melody. And on top of that melody you have various guitar noises, solos, bass lines, there's just constant change on that front, but the main part is constantly the same. And I do enjoy this one, love the vibe of it, it reminds me of Taeyeon, it has that mysterious vibe to it, I either get 8 out of 10, Vlad Tepe's tapes or however you pronounce that shit, well this song has amazing piano at the beginning, love that stuff, it's so memorable, the vocals mostly great, especially the screaming and growling, the cleans, well it depends on who's singing, and the guitar riffs, the drumming, the constant changes, it's all fun, this sounds like a fever dream, to be quite honest, 8 out of 10, Lord of Domination, this is my second favorite song on the record because of the vocal performance, like at the beginning. One of the dudes is growling like and then you hear that ah, that ah, that ah screaming and that ah screaming is like someone just stepped on a Lego and he's screaming his lungs out and it's so hilarious to me. Like I love it because it sounds amazing. Like. You can feel the constant dread and emotions and anger and hatred and sadness. It's so fun to hear. And I love that part. The guitar riffs slap, the drumming, the bass lines, the jazzy moments. It's all here. This song is a journey. It's a twisted one. 10 out of 10. Silent Journey. Well, this one, yet again, amazing instrumental work. It sounds demented. The vocals, well, it depends on who's singing. Sometimes Chris sings with and I want to kill myself. But besides that, this is a classic, it's weird. The dissonant chords create that very evil sounding atmosphere, 8 out of 10. Spanish Fly, another instrumental piece. I love the beginning of this song because the guitars here are quite positive and melodic sounding. Then it all changes, but I just love that first minute of the song. Then we've got the change, but it's still fun, some jazzy parts, some evil sounding parts. It's all fun and well. Love the piano as well, 10 out of 10. Succubus, 
Now this is one of my least favorite songs here because of the first part of the song. I do enjoy the instrumental work like throughout the entire thing, but the vocals in the first two minutes, not for me. Then you have some cool growling and screaming which is very nice. The second part of the song is what I love. The first one, not for me. 7 out of 10, Night Shadows. I love the guitar riffs here, they sound a little bit thrashier. Love the vocals, mostly the screaming and growling. Yeah, this one is very nice, it has slightly different vibe from the previous songs. 9 out of 10, the voice of the slain pig, another very dissonant sounding song. It sounds like a nightmare from which you cannot wake up. Love the screaming and shouting, the vocals. Well, some of the singing, not for me. It's an okay track, not my favorite one, but it's good. 7 out of 10. Confessions. This one is a little bit more straightforward, especially when you think about the structure and the guitar riffs. The guitar riffs have more of a death metal, black metal and thrash metal influence in them. Love that. The vocals, well, they are just good. Again, some of the clean singing is ruining it for me, but that's the only flaw. 8 out of 10. Spacecraft. This is a song that is the other way around. I feel like the instrumental work here is a little bit too chaotic for my taste. It's like the band themselves don't know what they are doing, but the vocal performance is amazing. I do enjoy the clean singing here. I don't know if that's Lars or Piotr, I guess it's Piotr, and I do enjoy that clean singing. It sounds like some count from the 18th century talking to me. <laughs> 7 out of 10. And the final song, it's an instrumental piece, Whip Me Darling. It's fine, it's only one minute long, I do enjoy its vibe and that's it. Nice ending, 7 out of 10. To sum it all up, the consistency is stable and the flow is fitting, reproductive, yeah, it's a great record. I enjoyed it from beginning to the end. It doesn't have any weak songs here. The highlights for me are Spanish Fly, Lord of Damnation, Night Shadows, Confessions, Vlad Tepe's, Frozen Landscapes and Silent Journey. I feel like this record should be listened by everyone because it just sounds so weird and avant-garde-ish, like this shit is eternal, like I haven't heard music that sounds like this, I mean I do listen to some dissonant death metal bands, but this one is different because you have some weird clean vocals, like you can feel like they took inspiration from bands they like, and they just mixed that all together and they came up with this and it's just so weird sounding because you can find everything here. There are some weird jazz fusion parts, some very melodic parts, but also some very brutal parts with blast beats and just screaming like you want to die. And then there's a part with some doo 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 doo, -doo melody and singing woo woo woo. And it's so interesting to hear, like even if you don't enjoy stuff like this, I still urge you to check it out because you might enjoy a melody or two and if not then at least you've experienced something new. Celebrate Dorsey by spinning this record today, it deserves your love and attention. That's all from me, thank you for watching, don't forget to like and subscribe, follow me on my Instagram link in the description, I will see you in my other videos. Also consider becoming a member of my channel so I can make an album review or maybe a Doom MIDI cover. That's all, bye!